because three years ago, you said that another Scottish referendum could only be justified if there was, quote, significant and material change. Mm -hmm. And one of the examples you gave was Scotland being taken out of the EU. But if you get your second Brexit referendum and we don't leave, you don't have your material change. Well, well, you've actually, I think, just in the way you asked me that question, demonstrated part of the answer to it. One of the examples that we put forward was being taken out of the EU. I said that. But over the past, exactly, so not so, the only... So if you don't get taken out, if you win the second Brexit referendum, we don't well, leave, the proposition and what's forward, the material change? The material change, frankly, is the way in which Scotland has had it completely demonstrated to over the past three years that our views... And our voice doesn't matter. We have. We You've saw, always said that. Well, You've like, always oh, told us Westminster is horrible. And, it, and it's always been true. Uh, right. So you knew that in 2016, well, but you didn't but make had, that a condition of a new had, referendum. So it, since 2016, and since we did this interview in the 2017 election, I've tried very hard on behalf of people across Scotland to compromise. I was prepared to find a compromise around staying in the single market and the customs union. We've sought to influence the direction of the negotiations. Uh, we've been treated with contempt, disinterest all along the way. Now, the point is, I do hope there is a second EU referendum for the whole of the UK to escape Brexit, but there is no guarantee in that that Scotland that. ends up in but, that position. But, but if, and we, if we do stay in the EU, Against the odds, perhaps, sure. if we do, you've lost your material change. You also said well, there had to, to be, be clear and sustained evidence of, on opinion polls, not a couple of opinion polls, that Scotland wanted independence. You don't you're, have that. You might, neither of the conditions you laid down for a second referendum in Scotland might well, look, be met. I, I, we're in an election, I'll publish a manifesto later this week, and that will set out very clearly the proposition I'm seeking support for in this election. Because, you know, the scenario you've just painted for me there, if that happens, there is still no guarantee. I mean, Nigel Farage and the Brexiteers are not going to go. This is going to dominate Westminster politics for a long, long time to come. And Scotland has had it demonstrated to it beyond any doubt over the past three years that right now, our future path as a country is not in our own hands. It's in the hands of Westminster politicians like Boris Johnson with his strings being pulled by Nigel Farage. I think it is time for people in Scotland to have a choice about whether that's the kind of future we want or instead do we want to have a different kind of future, one that we determine but, ourselves. But you see, you laid down clear conditions three years ago for a second Scottish referendum. And if they're not met, well, and one of them hasn't been met on the opinion polls. The other one might not be with a second well, Brexit I, I, referendum. Actually, you say, I'll just come up with some more reasons I, well, for a well, second well, referendum. Well, it doesn't mean well, anything. Firstly, three years ago is a long time. It feels a lot longer, I have to tell you. But you, you put to me there one of the conditions about increased support for in, uh, most of the polls, almost all of opinion polls show increasing support for independence. They show increasing support for a second... They do not show clear and sustained well, look, evidence that a majority of Scots favour independence. Your words. Well, you, you, you're quoting different things to me here. I stood on a, a manifesto. I'm standing on a manifesto in this election and I'm putting to the, to the people of Scotland a proposition that all of the experience of the last three years says that we should take our future into our own okay. hands. Now, Scotland might choose independence. I believe it will if it's given the chance again but whatever future Scotland chooses in that regard it should be ours to choose it shouldn't be dictated to us. Suppose we leave the United Kingdom leaves mm -hmm. the EU in 2020 and you get your second yep. Scottish referendum maybe not to 2021 but you get it and you win how long before Scotland could rejoin the EU? Well, I'm not going to give you a, a specific time scale for that, Just Rennie. Give me that, a, well, a, a, I, a my, In all of my experience of discussions in the, with different interests in the European Union, I think that could be relatively quick. But that will depend on the discussions we have. Uh, we you know, understand the conditions we would require to meet and the, the discussions that would require to take place. But you know, if we're in a position of Scotland being taken out of the European Union, uh, then we will be seeking a way back in. There will be other that. options, for Scotland. There will be other options for Scotland in the interim, for you, example. You said relatively quick. That's not what the SNP's own growth commission says. It says it could take up to 10 years. Look, At I, least well, five and up to 10. I, I'm not entirely sure what bit of the Growth Commission you're quoting to well, me there. It's, oh, right, well, but, I tell you, it says that to join Scotland would have to create its own stable currency. That no, could take no, no, I, 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 with, with years. the greatest respect, Andrew, I don't think because that is not uh, a requirement necessarily of joining the European Union. What you're quoting to yes, me there, hold on, hold on. You have to have your own currency. No, it has that to is be not. Stable, that is not. And you true. have to have an independent monetary you're, policy. You're, 
I think you may find that you're slightly mistaken on some of that, uh, but can I set out what you've, you've quoted to me there, a part of the Growth Commission, and then you have said that the Growth Commission said it would take five to ten years for an independent Scotland to join the European Union. That is not accurate. Um, I don't have the Growth Commission report in front of me, but I am pretty certain that that is not well, an accurate the, quotation. The Growth Commission set out six economic tests. For, for establishing a currency. For your own uh -huh. currency. And it says in the interim you would use the pound. Yes. But you wouldn't be part of the UK no. Monetary Union. But we would be setting up uh, a central bank. We would be setting up the infrastructure that is required for that. That is part of the discussion right. we would have about the European Union. But it is not true to say we would have had to have established an independent currency before joining the European Union. But in the situation we're talking about, England, the rest of the UK, would no longer be in the EU. You would still be using the pound, mm -hmm. but you wouldn't have monetary union. You're seriously saying that you would try to join the EU using the currency of a country that is no longer in we've, the we've, EU? We've set out Brussels wouldn't allow well, that to first, happen. Firstly, the pound is Scotland's currency right now. The proposition is that until the conditions were right to establish our own currency, which we've said would be our objective, then we would use the pound to do that. And right, but what, not what, in the monetary union. Not, well, not in a monetary union. Now, as right. we argued in 2014 for a monetary union, I, I think there is still and an that argument. Was thrown back. I think it's still an argument for a monetary union, but clearly uh, what was demonstrated in 2014 is that Westminster could operate a veto on that. So we've set out very clearly the conditions for moving to a separate currency um, and the preparations that would require to be made. So you're conflating certain things in well, your questions I'm, I'm to me here. I'm following your own Growth Commission well, because well, it, it says greatest, that if you use the, the pound... With the greatest respect, Andrew, I don't think you are entirely... Well, the, what the Growth it. Commission says is if you use the pound as a transition mm -hmm. till you get to your own currency, Scotland would not secure monetary policy sovereignty for in, in during independence. You would still have to follow the Bank of England. And it's clear in that situation, you could not join the EU. You would have to wait till you got well, your own th currency. This is where I, I, I'm absolutely certain the Growth Commission does not say that latter point. We would have a discussion with the European Union about the journey an independent Scotland was on in terms of currency and the uh, accession, if Scotland was already out of the European Union, to the point where we rejoined the European Union. You know, there is uh, a number of things that would require it's very to be done. In. Well, look, Scotland faces right now the uncertainty of being ripped out of the European Union against our will. It's not of our making. Uh, and we need to plot the best way forward right. for our country, where we are in charge of the decisions that we take. Well, one of the Commission's tests, your own Commission, mm -hmm. was that to establish your own currency, you need to build up substantial reserves in a new Scottish currency. But Scotland runs a large budget deficit, it largely runs a large balance of payments deficit. How could you ever build up these well, reserves? On the deficit, Scotland's deficit right now is reducing. The last time I think you and I had a discussion about this, Scotland's deficit was somewhere sure. close to 10% of GDP. Everybody's deficit it is down. It is down. Well, but you're asking me about Scotland's yeah. deficit. But, but you deficit still is plan to reduced. run a deficit. But that is so why how the, could you build up reserves? The Growth Commission sets out a, a deficit reduction plan over a, a period. Our deficit is already down to well, 7, seven percent, which is still the largest in because, Europe. Well, but it's down from substantially because our revenues are rising. Uh, our job is to accelerate the progress of that, as the Growth Commission sets out in detail. But it never sets out a surplus. It sets out a target of a 3% well, deficit. How do you, you build up currency reserves if you're running deficits? If you, if you take the Growth Commission, which you've obviously read, maybe not closely enough, but our def Scotland's deficit is already lower than the Growth Commission estimated it would be in 2020-2021. So our deficit is reducing at a faster rate than the Growth Commission anticipated. It our could go up against to... this year. I mean, the well, British but, deficit but is going up. But that's the point. And your deficit the, could the go up. The risk to Scotland right now is of Brexit. It's let Brexit me, that is posing the let risk Let me try one deficit. more time. How do you build up substantial get... currency reserves if you're running both an external and because, an internal because deficit. Because our task is to get our deficit reducing faster. Uh, that is principally through growing our economy faster, which remaining in the EU or returning right. to the EU helps us but, to do. But at and no stage do you that... say you'd run a surplus? 
Yeah, well, I, th I think over time, of course, we would aspire to run a surplus. But after but we've 10 to... years, you're still planning a 3% deficit. The, the point I've, I've already pointed out to you, our deficit is reducing at a faster rate than it was anticipated First when those things... It's 12 billion. It's the biggest in Europe. And it's, I've just pointed out to you, it's 3% lower than it was the last time you and I had this discussion. It has reduced at a faster rate than the Growth Commission anticipated our job, which would be easier with independence, is to grow our economy faster, to right. get our deficit and, reduced. And that's what the Growth Commission says, that you would grow a bit faster, though it just takes figures. Actually, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. The Growth Commission assumes trend growth rate. Our but, job But it then adds 1% to... on to get your spending plan so that you grow as what you think small economies grow. But there would still have to be tight spending controls. And this is what the Institute for Fiscal Studies says of this plan that it implies at least another decade of the sort of restraint on public spending that Scotland is currently, currently experiencing. If current policy is austerity, austerity would continue under the Commission's proposals. The, the Why would Scotland vote well, for that? I don't, I don't accept that characterisation. The, the, the IFS. Well, well, and I've got a great respect for the mm -hmm. IFS, but I'll tell you the reasons why I, I don't. Firstly, um, in terms of what the Growth Commission said in terms of spending increases, it recommended spending increases above the rate of inflation. It also has some very strong messages about times when growth was lower uh, than desired, uh, the case for spending more in these periods in order to boost the economy and expand the economy. But you, know, you can illustrate the point by looking backwards. If the Growth Commission recommendations on spending in an independent Scotland had been applied over the past 10 years, Scotland wouldn't have suffered the austerity cuts actually, to our budget that we have suffered. And actually, I saw a figure that the cuts would have been 50 billion more than well, they've been over that 10 years. I can assure you that years. is not the case. If, if so those, I've seen no... Where's, well, the, I, where, where's the economic model that has done that? It, if you apply those figures... Well, who's done that modelling? Um, that I've had that figure done by... Because I've seen modelling that shows it would have been much know, worse I, I than the austerity I don't know what your modelling uh, is, but I'm saying that if you apply those figures to the last 10 years, yes, then right. there wouldn't have been the austerity cuts to Scotland's well, budget. We look forward to seeing the modelling on that. You, I look forward of, to seeing yours modeling, as well. <laughs> you've used research uh, that says Brexit would increase UK-EU trade friction because we'd be outside the EU. We couldn't trade the way we do now. And over time, you've pointed out, this research says it would cost Scotland 80,000 jobs. But you claim that independence would create no trade friction with the UK, but, no but job it's, losses, it's not in, no uh, loss of living standards, nothing to see here, just move on. Well, I'll come on to Scotland in a moment, minute, but just for illustrative purposes here, if you look at when Ireland was able to combine independence with membership of the European Union, actually that increased Ireland's prosperity, it allowed them to expand and diversify their export base. Now, on the question of trade friction, if friction it is not... I want an independent Scotland to be inside the single market. I want the UK to be inside the single market. And it won't it's be. It's Brexit. Well, it I don't be. think you can say that definitively. You're right, it's looking Well, that's the deal unlikely. that's been done. But is we, exactly. we, we wouldn't be in the customs you union under the Johnson deal. earlier on about the possibility but of Brexit perhaps being reversed. So no, no, but it's the, <laughs> first person, I mean, we're now talking about on the basis we yeah, leave. Sure. You would be in the EU customs union if you get your independent Yep. It's got mm -hmm. EU membership. The rest of the UK would be in but its own don't... customs union. There would you're, be you're trade asking friction. Me here. You're asking me here about friction uh, at the border mm. between... Well, you've Scotland. talked about it. Well, I, I want to, because I actually think it's a really important point, and I want to say out pretty candidly, um, I think for the benefit of your viewers, it's important to recognise what we're talking about, goods and services. The common travel area between the UK and Ireland will continue post-Brexit. There's, you right. know, that's passport-free travel. There's no suggestion or reason that wouldn't apply to an independent Scotland as well. But we, we don't yet know the final relationship between but, the UK... Well, can you let me finish this point? We don't yet know the final relationship between the UK and the EU. But we know it won't be as friction-free as it okay, is now. So, but when, and therefore but it won't we, be as friction-free with an we, independent so Scotland. What we need to do when we have greater clarity in what that relationship is going to be, because it's not independence that causes this, it's Brexit that causes this. I understand we that. Be, we need to be clear about any implications for Scotland and how we reduce and take away the impact of that on any trade flows. But if you and have we... an independent Scotland inside the EU and the rest of the United Kingdom outside the EU, 
Of course, there's going to be some trade friction. I mean, less of the 20 percent of your trade is with the EU. Over 60 percent uh, is with the rest of the United I'm Kingdom. Well figures, and the but, idea but, that you could lose 80,000 jobs we're, because we leave the EU, but you lose no making, jobs because you I'm leave actually, the independent I'm actually trying to answer your question UK. candidly here. I'm simply making the point we don't yet know what the UK's final relationship with the EU will be. When we have clarity on that, we have to understand the implications and we have to set out clearly how we deal with those implications in order to keep trade flowing between Scotland and England, okay. which is in our interest, and it is in the interest of the rest of the UK. But it is also in our interest to stay part of the single market that is eight times the size of the UK market. Yeah, because to which actually, you only export because, less than well, 20% of your exports. Is, but this is the point. Our exports to the European Union are increasing. And again, to go back They're to the... increasing to the UK too. Yeah, absolutely. But, and, and there is a, a benefit and an advantage to Scotland to grow our EU exports further. And the experience of Ireland, albeit in a different time in history, is when they combine that independence with membership of the European Union, their exports to the European Union grew and they became more prosperous. Right. That's the best of both worlds that I believe Scotland can attain. We're the market for Ireland and Look, Scot uh, Ireland imports more from Scotland's, us than anybody Scotland's else. Scotland's trade with the rest of the UK is important. I am not saying it's not. But, and the rest of the UK's trade with Scotland is important, and it's a priority for me to make sure that that Let continues. Let me ask you this. You've argued that any Brexit deal should be put to the second referendum. But you're against any Scottish independence deal being put to a confirmatory referendum. Isn't that just self-serving and inconsistent? No, I don't think it is, because I don't believe that it was inevitable that we ended up in this position with Brexit. I oppose Brexit, but the mess that Brexit's become and the lack of clarity and the lack of progress wasn't inevitable. Sure. But put that your was independence to, deal well, to a confirmatory a referendum if you ever get one. In 2014, and it would be my intention, exactly the same would be true in another independence referendum, the detailed proposition was put to people in advance of the vote. That was not the case in the Brexit referendum. Just there was no detail apart from the side of the bus. You, you, your 2014 white paper based on independence said there would be £8 billion of oil revenues by 2016. What was the real figure? Well, look, the, 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 oil, figure? the oil price reduced and that was not million. foreseeable at that point. You said that you, that you would remain part of monetary union with the UK. That was a key part of your and, white and, paper. And if there had been a yes and vote there, I, I believe we would have stayed part of the monetary union with the EU. turned down by all the main Westminster yeah, well. parties. The fact is that the deal you could have eventually done would have not been the same as the white paper. The same could happen again. You need a confirmatory referendum. Well, I believe if you put your case forward, if you argue that case, if you tell people how you're going to pursue at that case, then those two things but are not the same. You can't tell us what currency Scotland would have. You can't tell us when we'll be able to rejoin true. the EU. You don't know if we're going to have our own currency, whether I've we use said the it, pound. You, and you've quoted, not always accurately in my view, but you've quoted at length the Growth Commission, setting out that we will use the pound, setting out the test and that we will apply to move to our own currency. But you accept that you can't join the EU with the pound. You've accepted no, that? No, I didn't accept that. Yeah, I, actually, I actually challenged that. Okay, well, <laughs> to, to we'll see what the Growth Commission accurate. says. Let's, as we come